Hey, you guys. Okay, so I'm going to try this again. I didn't try recording this video like four times. It's either too noisy, too this, too that. God is like, sis, whatever you got to do, just get it out. So I'm just part in the parking lot now. I left where I was. And I'm going to get this video out. So we're going to talk about the Cultivated Series. I do have um, another video for you guys, but I'm going to have to do that Um if not today, then maybe tomorrow or something. So please excuse like the lightning and everything. We just got to get this out how we can, you guys. So um, I've been mentioning to you guys like on the prayer line and also on um, like just some of the videos and different things that the Lord had um, told me to do this series with you guys. And he had downloaded it to me November 13th or so. And I wrote it down and he was just like downloading notes and everything like that. So we're talking about the Cultivated Series. And I want to give you guys like the definition and just the notes and like some scriptures. Whatever I don't get a chance to do, I may just have to record like a part two. But I'm really trying to get everything in um, in part one. So the definition, guys, of cultivated. Let me go to my notes. It is cultured. It is so it is something or someone that is refined and well educated. It is cultured, educated. These are the synonyms. Um like well treated well informed civilized enlightened discerning refined polished well mannered gracious so that is the definition of culture but the definition of um of cultivated i'm sorry but the definition of cultivate is prepare and use and this is more specifically dealing with like land and everything like that but it's prepare and use and it's like dealing with land and crops or gardening and another thing that sparked this too is I love flowers, like flowers of any kind, but I love flowers. And the other day, cause like every, um, like every week I'll change the water or sometimes I'll leave the water and I'll just add clean water. Cause like it don't be dirty or nothing don't be wrong. But I had to clip, like I clipped the ends before I'm saying that it's for a reason. I clipped the ends when I first got them some weeks back I clipped the ends just like the ends and I put them inside the, my flower vase and I put like the plant food in there you know and everything and then like recently a few days ago I had to clip the ends again but I had to clip a little bit more and some of them like that were like died off I had to throw them away which was only like two out of maybe like 14. So the rest of them were still like beautiful and I clipped some and I like pulled away like some of the petals and different things but they even look more beautiful okay so i was thinking about that with this when they were talking about prepare and use like for land for crops or gardening right and then synonyms for that is to till to plow to dig to turn like hoe farm work prepare fertilize mulch and god is saying what this is the notes he was saying to me he was saying he is calling us deeper into him right and he's been telling us that, that for a long time but he was saying that he was like he is calling us deeper into him there is always room to grow and grow more into the image of god so some of you you are dealing with situations where you are going through this you are being cultivated god wants to cultivate you right he's preparing you but instead of like just like land like like physical land he's preparing you for use for his kingdom Many of you have already been using his kingdom, but he's saying there's another level. He's preparing you. So he's having you till certain ground. He's having you plow, plow. And like that's even like that scripture came to my mind. When we put our hands to the plow, you can't look back. Because if you look back, you're not fit. I'm not fit. We're not fit to be in with the Lord. So God has us digging certain things, but then he may be digging certain things in our life. Right? and working and preparing and fertilizing and mulching and you know like uh, those beautiful like landscapes and those beautiful gardens and people's yards and different things it looks so beautiful but it cost them something for that to look that way come on it cost them something for that grass to say that green it cost them something with fertilizer or whatever they're using it cost them something for that it cost them they sweat they labor it cost them research it cost them money for them products it cost them things and many of you are feeling like that you like god this is costing me this costed me, God. This cost me. It has costed me this. It is costing me that. It cost me right now, Father, Father God. And God is like, allow me to continue to cultivate you. Right? You're going from cultivate to cultivate it. And the Lord said to me, he said he cultivates you for his purpose and purposes for your life. Right? Cultivation, 
brings elevation is what the Lord said because like what in the cultivating process it's getting that for when it is ready for harvest it can come up so let me keep going because I'm gonna share something with you guys but let me just keep going with this I want to I want to stick with the notes so I can stay on topic but it was tied to this so another definition for that for um the other definition is try to acquire or develop a quality sentiment or skill right and this is what the Lord said to me he said many people want him like God to use them to elevate them but they don't want to go through God's process we cannot say that we believe in God but we don't believe in the, in the God that we say we believe in and trust his time and in his process we cannot say we want God's results but we're not willing to do it God's way God is saying no when you want me to use you and elevate you and, and work in your life you got to do it my way you got to do it through my process and one time will not be enough one time will not be enough right this is another thing the lord said god knows that it cost that it costed you or is costing you and he will reward you well and then another thing he showed me he showed me this a number of times he said it cost jesus also because we are not living this life just for us when you say you're a christian and you're a servant of the lord and you're following the lord it is about the lord like we've been talking about over the years a, a, a servant a student and jesus said this will not be greater than his master that the world hated him they will hate us also hate the disciples also he was, he was giving it to them originally but us following him as well that's for us too so it, it costs you but it it costs jesus also it costs him his blood and sacrifice and that blood and sacrifice is speaking to this day that death bearing resurrection his ministry on earth um the disciples just the gospel just everything that ties to him so he knows that it costs you and you will be rewarded in his life and in the life to come you being cultivated and allowing God to cultivate you is is not in vain. You guys, let me let me stick to the notes. Okay, this is another thing that the Lord um, has showed me. Okay, so this quote that says you cannot want the cross, like you cannot want the crown without the cross, right? Some people they they want the crown, but you you had to, Jesus had to go through the cross to get that crown. Like we were talking about um, a while ago as well, like certain people chapter. Some people see you on this level or you on this chapter, but they don't know what it costs you to 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 get to that level. They don't know. And some people, you know, they like, I just wish this or I wish that. And it's not in this past, like inspiration and different things. Or it's just like motivating them. It's just, no, you want what that person have. You may have to go through exactly what they had to go through to get that. That's going to include betrayals. That's going to include backstabbing, suffering, sleepless nights it could be, certain trials and temptations and storms that they went through. You got to go through everything that they went through. You got to walk fully through their shoes to get everything that they got. And that's not for you. What God has for you is for you and what God has for them is for them. So I always try to tell people, you don't know what that cost that person. You don't know what that cost that person. Even if they tell you their testimony, it's going to be deeper than that because they had to literally they had to literally walk through all of that. You don't know what that cost that person. You don't know what that is costing that person to maintain that. You don't know what it cost them. So be grateful and let that inspire, motivate you. I'm hearing this very loud for somebody, even as the Lord is highlighting to me this stop sign. If someone needs to stop and think about this message and what God is saying to you, because the Lord said to me, this is for life. This is for life. Like this type of message is for life. A lot of the other messages are too, but he he said that he said this is for us to think about for life. Cultivate and cultivation and being cultivated. Then the Lord starts showing to me what the rejoicing comes to suffering. Right? You suffered, but then you're going to rejoice. With the rainbow comes rain. A lot of times after rain, the rainbow comes. Things get more beautiful, things get more brighter. The sun begins to come out more. With the seed comes the harvest. A lot of people want to harvest, but you're not willing to go in the ground. You're not willing to be planted. You're not willing to be a seed. But how can you want to harvest? These fruits and vegetables that we enjoy here today in this earth and in this life and in these grocery stores and from these farmers markets and things like that, they had to go down and be become a seed. What we see is just a finished product, but it cost them a process. It cost them something. Right? And the Lord is saying, when you are in his, in, and when you are in God's plan, God's will for your life, you have to entrust your very trust to the God that you say you trust. That's what he said to me. He said, when you are in God's plan, this is for all of us. When you are in God's plan, will for your life, you have to entrust your very trust 
to the God that you say you trust, the God of your salvation, the God of your life. And the scriptures that I have for you guys, I'm going to try to make time to, to read these in Ecclesiastes 3 in this video or in the next one. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. I'm going to give them to y'all up front. John 15, John 17, John 13, 1 through 17, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And then it was another one. Oh, yeah, it was Matthew 7, 24 through 27 and Ephesians 4, 14 through 16. Okay, let me keep giving y'all the notes. Okay, let me keep giving y'all the notes. So, um, I'm going to break down Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. A lot of these scriptures we've already read have full, in-depth Bible study teachings on them, but these were the ones the Lord gave me for this. Okay, this is the next point. As you grow in the Lord and your intimacy with Him deepens, there will be different things, different habits, different people, different places, different things, different levels of character, uh, faith, integrity that you have to lay down and pick up as you grow. So it's like, okay, so now we're not in daycare anymore, right? Let's say we're in second grade now. Now we're not in daycare no more. Um, now we're not in, um, let me turn this car off. Now we're not in daycare. I should put the keys over here. Now we're not in daycare no more. Now we're not in pre-K. Now we're not in kindergarten. Now we're not in first grade. We're in second grade, but we still have to go up to fifth grade to finish, to, to finish elementary school. There's still middle school. There's still high school. For some, there's college or trade school or whatever. There's what I'm basically saying, as I said before with this, there's always another level. So yes, celebrate the fact that, okay, good. We're not on those other levels and we are in second grade now. This is not literal, but there's another level more than second grade. So that's how it is with our intimacy with the Lord. The Bible talks about how we go from faith to faith, level to level and glory to glory. There's always another level in God. That's a part of intimacy, right? And um, in relationships or any area, you get to know a person by continuing on with them. Y'all relationship and intimacy grows and deepens by different things that you go through, good and bad. You go through certain things and that 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 um, makes a difference or if you're gonna get stronger or if it's gonna pull y'all away from each other. And the Lord is showing that to me for someone. Many of us, we go through certain things and it's like it really could make or break. It really could make a break. It really could, okay, this is going to draw me closer to God or it's like, okay, I'm going to allow this to pull me away from him. And during our uh, cult being cultivated and um, allowing God to cultivate us, we're going to go through different things, but we have to choose to, this is going to pull me closer to God. This is drawing deeper into intimacy. This is just deepening our intimacy. God, continue to cultivate me. Continue to cultivate me. Because the God that I said was my savior, I have to choose to serve every day. It's not about him serving me. He gave his service for me. And daily, like, load us with benefits and bless us in different things. But the God that I say that I serve, I have to choose to serve him every day. I have to choose to take up my cross for him every day. This is a daily process. Glory to God. And then another thing that the Lord has showed me a while ago, actually some years ago, but he's been showing this to me more and more. I won't get into details with this, but he's been showing me more and more with this some months back with the chambers, like in the king's kingdom, how there are some people in the king's kingdom that are outside his court. They're still a part of this, his kingdom, but they are outside his court. Oh my God, I feel like I'm looking at my mom as I'm talking to you guys on this camera. So um, there, they are... Um, they are still in the king's court, but they are outside. They are outside his his court, but they're in the outer court. And then there are some people that are more closer with the king, and they're mo mostly like on the, in the inside. So it's like a cup bearer and all these different people. They have different people that are a little bit closer in the kingdom than others. And that's the thing about God, guys. We can go as close and as deep as we wish to go. Right. And then he was also showing me like um, with the holies of holies, like there was the outer court and the inner court and other things like that. But let me keep going, guys, because I have two more pages to give y'all. So this is what the Lord has said to me with this. Where are you with God? God don't want you looking at no, nothing else or no one else. He didn't want me doing this either. He said, where are you with him? Because before I give y'all any word, I always have to self-reflect. I always have to eat the word first before I give it to y'all. Amen. So the Lord is saying that, where are you with him? Where are you with God? Where are you with him? Spiritually, where are you with him on, on your level? Where are you? 
the Lord also had me to ask this question. What is your intimacy, your intimacy and your scale or your season looking like with God? You could think about this. You could write this down or just however you want to do it. But what is your intimacy scale or your season looking like with God? You know how some people like in the marriage, like if they would be asked these questions, they'll be like, um, on the scale from one to 10, where would you say you are? And the, the person may say, well, I feel like we're on the 10 or the other person may be like, I think we're on the three in this area, you know? So with you and your relationship with God, what is your intimacy and, and season looking like with him? Okay. What does, okay. What does it smell like? Also the Lord said to me, right? Because like our worship could be like a sweet, and we talked about this years ago too. It could be like a sweet, uh, pleasing aroma in his sight. But the Lord said your intimacy, like your season with him, what does it smell like? Is it sweet? Does it smell sweet? Is it is it like bitter? Is it unpleasant? Or is it a sweet smell? What, what is it? And the Lord wants you guys to be real about these things. Okay, the Lord said, are you on his calendar or your own? Are you on God's calendar? You on God's calendar? You on God's clock? You on God's season? Or are you on your own calendar clock in season? The Lord also had me to ask this. He said, are you a servant of Jesus or are you trying to be the star? Are you a servant of Jesus Christ or are you trying to be the star? You like you want you want to be the star. You want the applause on you or you you feel like God has to serve you. Like, OK, OK, God, I know I say you was my Lord and Savior, but how I'm feeling right now, like I feel like I'm over you. The Lord had me write this down for somebody. And then he also said he wants you to grow in every realm and level of your life. God, and we talked about this before too. God doesn't want us to just give him little pieces of this area. We all go through this. We all have to be built up in this daily and in our seasons and times with him to trust him and to, um, it, it, to, to, to trust him and allow him to have his way through sacrifices, through trust, through different seasons, through different trials, through different tests, through different blessings, through different levels, right? That's how we grow. That's how we learn. That's how we mature. That's how we become more and more like him, right? Not depending on our own, in our own strength, but for him. Okay. So God wants us to grow in every realm and in, in realm and level and area of our life. Okay, God has also said this. God is trying to take many of you from was to ill. So I gave you guys the definitions of cultivate and cultivate it. So something that is cultivated with ED it is saying that it is already done. So something that is like cultivate, that is like in the process of or what is happening. Okay, and then he's telling me to share this. So I had wrote this note for this is from gardenguides.com, this part. The process by which seeds, talking about seeds, become plants is called germination. Inside of a seed is an embryonic plant that is just waiting for the right conditions to present themselves so that it can emerge and continue growing. Until that time, the seed remains dormant. Dormant is um, asleep, sleeping, temporarily inactive or inoperative. Okay, some seeds, that's just a definition I looked it up, but I knew what it meant, but just for me to give you guys this. Some seeds can remain dormant for years and still be viable. Viable is workable or feasible. And then the Lord has showed me this. You know how when you get like a brand new debit card and they send you the card in the mail or you go get it at the bank? And um, like if they send it to you in the mail, you have to, you have an account with them, but you just have to activate that card. You got to peel off the sticker. You can activate it. You can call the, the um, toll free number, 800 number, 88 number or whatever on the back. And you got to put in like your information and that card is available to you immediately. But so many people, the Lord has shown me this. He said, you need to activate your spiritual debit card, activate your benefits and work it. Some of you have, or you are sitting on so many blessings and benefits. You are sitting on so many words from God. You are sitting on it by not moving in it. You are sitting on it by being comfortable. You are sitting on it by not trusting God and trusting more yourself. You are sitting on it. And some of you, you just don't even know you have it or it's available to you. And the Lord said to my spirit, when I wrote this down, in these notes he said activate your spiritual debit card activate your benefits work it the spiritual debit card could also be tied to like the word the bible god's word to you in the actual bible okay you guys the lord is saying that for somebody he don't want you he don't he don't want you to just he don't want you to, to lie dormant he wants you to grow he wants you to be planted go through what you have to go through and trust god to get you through Right, because when you're going through, it's not to stay there. You're going through, 
right and he's gonna and when the time is right the lord is gonna make it happen like you're talking about in isaiah if the bible says in isaiah when the time is right i the lord will make it happen and god is saying this so just waiting for the right conditions to present themselves and also a reminder that scripture when we humble ourselves before god he in due time he will exalt us amen so that it can emerge and continue growing okay i told y'all that part so let me go back to this okay I told y'all this too. God is trying to take many of you from was to is. God wants you to advance, level up, and go to your next level. Right? Because in the spiritual world, it is already done. This That world is more real than this world. Guys, I know we've been talking about that for a number of years with that as well. But God wants you to be in agreement with him. Because when you are in, in agreement with God, you're going to get everything that comes with being in agreement with God. You're going to get all his promises. The, the promises of God are yes and amen. The Bible talk about, I believe in Proverbs, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Right? God is also saying, he said, leave what's known for the unknown. So leave, and he had showed me this with Abram leaving the familiar place. We have a Genesis series in Abraham and we talked about this. But in Genesis 12, when the Lord had told him, leave this country, your father's house, and basically all the familiar and go into a land I will show you. Some of you, you're not fully reaching where you could reach. God is blessing you because you are his child. And it's like you're seeing drips and drops like a like a faucet that's not fully turned off. That water's not fully turned off. You're seeing drips and drops of things. But God wants you to experience his full favor. Glory to God, like a full sprinkler, like a full pool, like a full uh, ocean, sea, pond, whatever you want to do. The Lord is saying he wants you to leave what's known. He, this is not a word for everybody, but it's a word for somebody for the unknown. But even though it's unknown and it's going to take a level of faith for you, it is known to God. So the God that is leading you knows where he's leading you because he's leading you and he knows the results. He sees all of the pieces of the puzzle, beginning, middle, end, all of that. And then the scripture he had gave me for you is Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Hold on, you guys. When I tell y'all it's hot, even with the AC on, that's why I just turned my car off. I'm going to finish this word out. God is good. He's saying, trust him, though. Trust him, guys. Okay, this is another thing. He said Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. God's way, his will, his route is the best way. And then the Lord, and then this is the, a, a decree that the Lord told me to, to give to you guys to write. God, I let down my plans so that I can pick up your promises and your will for my life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Trust God enough to lay down your plans, especially if you somebody that he been calling and you've been running because I used to be like that too. Lay down your plans your will lay down your plan so that you can pick up God's promises so that you can pick up God's best come on so that you can pick up God's will for your life yeah that motto that motto that says you have tried um the rest now try the best just came to me for whoever that was for okay the Lord also said I told you guys what what the cultivated let me go back to this next one okay the Lord has shown me this and I start laughing he was like well right here this is part of the message because sometimes he cracked like a lot of jokes with me. So he has showed me a 34-year-old in the baby's body. Not um, talking about anybody like that, you know, deals with things like that. He wasn't showing that to me like that. He was showing it to me to get me to see what he was saying for me like for a maturity. But for those that have like deformities or handicaps, it's not nothing against those people. God bless some people. I don't want nobody coming acting crazy at all. The Lord has showed me this, a 34-year-old in the baby's body. Right. It was in the baby's body. But like the way that they was up on me, they were like complaining and but they didn't want to grow. They didn't want to grow. They just wanted to stay on that level, but they didn't want to grow. And the Lord was saying that's how many of his children are. You're complaining to him. You're crying out to him. You're older in years. But God is saying in the spiritual realm, you're still a baby. And he wants you to grow. He wants you off the milk and onto the meat. We talked about that before. It's in the Bible. I'll see if I can leave that below with these scriptures. But the Lord said you need to grow. And this and this and this and this person was like real deal complaining and crying. But the thing was, it's not that God can't change that situation. He's trying to change you. He's waiting on you to say, God, change me, have your way so that I can grow. But they don't want to grow. And they're blaming their lack of growth and maturity. And next level on God, but God is like, no, you can't put this on me. You have to look at the person in this mirror. 
Okay, the Lord House was said to me too, because when we was little, we used to be at school on the playground, and like we get into an argument with like one of the kids or just anything, we will say this thing, act your, um, you need to act your age and not your shoe size. Now we six and seven and eight and 10 talk, talking like that. And a lot of our shoe sizes wasn't even <laughs> those sizes yet. Cause like I'm a size seven and I'm 32. So, but God was like, and then some of you, you know, you may be bigger or smaller, bigger feet, smaller feet, whatever. But God has said this to me, act your age, not your shoe size, but spiritually. God is taking us deeper. He's taking us further. It don't have to be a literal shoe size because some people say, well, I've been with the Lord for this long or I got this position or I got this title and they feel like, you know, all, all the congrats with them. Good for you with that. But it's the glory pointing back to God. Have you advanced? Have you grown? Have you gone to another place in him spiritually? Are you in that same place? The Lord is saying this, this is an hour of maturity. He's also saying he wants us to continue growing spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, financially, relationally, business, every area, every area, you guys, spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, financially, relationally, business, every area. And the Lord also said increase and grow, increase in growth and elevation in every area. Right. OK, I had read that to you. OK, the Lord said also. Some of you are not growing because you won't be planted. You won't be rooted and grounded in him. And then the scriptures he had gave me. Um, he had gave me these scriptures for this. I have to look it up in the Bible. When I start reading to you guys with it, I'll get more into it because we're going to have to do a part two. But he was also saying. Um, when he had gave me to be planted, you won't be rooted and grounded in him. He had gave me that, that scripture with um, yeah, Ephesians 4, 14, 16. I, I had told you guys this. And Matthew 7, 24, 27. Then the Lord has said to me, as we close the notes part, will you allow him, God, to cultivate to cultivate you? Right? And these last two as well. The diamonds and the roses. Like people that love diamonds and, and, and they're different things that make up a diamond, a diamond. But that diamond have to go through a process like a very serious process to become what you see roses many people love the roses i told you i love flowers many people love roses but them roses have to go through a process those 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 thorns need to be clipped off certain things about that rose need to be clipped off to make a rose what it is and also the lord's reminded me too we talked about this before but the pearls and the oysters but that oyster have to go through irritation and different things to to form that for that to, to be coming out of them so the lord is saying this for someone won't you allow him to just cultivate you allow him to have his way in your life sometimes guys it is not going to be uh convenient it's not it's not going to be comfortable it's not going to be convenient you know but for god it is worth it and god wants us to have the mentality of eternity look at what we're dealing with yes in this physical earth but this physical earth is not forever eternity is forever being in heaven or hell, that will be forever. That will never end. So like Apostle Paul was talking about this, not um, before me, but like he was talking about these light and momentary afflictions. They are working for us a, a, like a greater glory. It's not before me, but the Holy Spirit just brought that scripture to my mind. Okay, this thing is about to cut off. I'm just going to read um, into it, do, And then when it come on, I'm going to just do like an audio. You guys, let me find it, you guys. I'm going to start with Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. No, I'm going to read that one next. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. No, because this thing's getting ready to cut off. I'm going to read that one next because the Lord wanted me to like really break that down, what he was saying to me for this. Let me read Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 first. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Proverbs 3 is talking about using wisdom. And verses 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths, or make thy paths straight. Okay, Matthew 7, 24 through 27 is the next one. Matthew 7 is talking about um, making judgments. Prayer and good actions. Beware of false prophets. Be doers of the word. But verses um, 24. No, let me read 21 through 27. 
Okay, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sins of mine and doeth them, or you, you do them, right? I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock and the rain descended like the rain fell down right and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not so it didn't fall which built his house upon well no because it was founded upon the rock and it fell not for it was founded upon the rock it was founded upon the rock and everyone that heareth these sins of mine and doeth them not so you don't do them shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand because with God it's no middle ground we either going to be hot or cold for him. Like Revelation talked about, if we look one, he's going to spit us out of his mouth. So we, in this season, we have to choose to be wise or foolish and continue on being wise and not choose to be foolish, like habitually. Because that's like people that, when they be like um, habitually be commu com um, committing like them traffic violations and that they get their license like revoked and you don't want to be revoked in the lord if that makes sense i know the gifts are without repentance but you don't want to be revoked with the lord. like you want god to be pleased with you on every area in private and public and um which built his house upon the sand the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it and it came to pass when jesus had ended these sins the people were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Okay, you guys, I'm going to stop with that. And the rest of them, I'm just going to read. 